Hello YouTube, in this video I'm going to give you three ways to make your training more fun. And making your training fun is absolutely essential if you want to stay in the game for the long term. Because consistency is key. And therefore, if you're unable to go in every single time you're supposed to, you're not going to be able to make it. And it's something I discussed in a video I'm going to put in the description that I uploaded recently talking about what happens when you skip a day. And I explained to you that you're never supposed to skip days. But people told me and asked me, hey, does it mean I train every single day? And the answer is, of course, no. You train whenever the program dictates that you train. So if you do a four-day split, that's three days where you're not training. But these are not skipped days. They're rest days. And they're just as important because they're scheduled. But when a day is scheduled and you don't go in, that's when you skip. And that's when there is a problem because it shows one thing most of the time. Either you were under-recovered, so it's your fault for your poor programming habits, or your training is not fun. And therefore, you didn't want to go in to do it. If it were fun, you wouldn't even think about it twice. You would do it. And it's a feeling I tried to express in the video as well, where I've said that personally, I never feel motivated. That doesn't mean, however, that I hate what I do. Because the two wouldn't work. It is extremely hard to do something if you don't feel love towards it. Because if there's no love, then there's ne there needs to be something else, another type of energy that carries you forward. And that energy for a lot of people is motivation. But the problem, as I said, is that you cannot rely on that energy. It's the same for if you have a job. If you hate your job, you're going to have to feel motivated to do it. But if the motivation is not there on a certain day, you're just going to skip. You're going to call in sick or something like this. And that's a big issue. The difference being, of course, that for a job, most of the time you have a job because you have to pay bills, you have to pay for your food. So it's necessary for survival. But for lifting, lifting is a hobby. Lifting is something that you do because you're supposed to like it and enjoy it. You do it out of your own free time. And therefore, there is absolutely no reason for your training to not be fun. And yet, a ton of people resent training, a lot of people don't like training, and that has nothing to do with them being incapable of actually enjoying physical activity. Most of the time, it's because they haven't found the one type that they like. And you're going to see that, as a whole, this can make all of the difference in the world. So, my number one tip is going to be to do things that you like. And that might sound stupid, but a lot of people don't do it. A lot of people, they do movements in their training that they don't enjoy doing. And that is not really necessary at all. Because when you look at all of the exercises available, you look at specificity, and you look at just the movement patterns that you have access to, there is no excuse for doing anything that you don't enjoy. Because in reality, there is no such thing as a lift that has to be done. And yes, that also is when we're going to talk about things like the bench, the squat, and the deadlift. You don't need to do these three things. If you wanted, you could be doing dips, you could be doing some sort of lunges, and you could be doing some sort of different hip hinge, like a good morning. That would still cover a lot of your bases. It's all a matter of why you're doing the lift. What is the goal of the lift? And once you think in that fashion, instead of having a weird attachment towards the lift that is completely foreign because it's not your own, you'll feel much better about training. So never be afraid to experiment. Never be afraid to replace something you don't enjoy with something else. And screw whoever has to say something about it. You don't have to squat to be able to call yourself a lifter. You don't. That is a purely, uh, it's a purely arbitrary decision to say things like this. And a lot of that stems from the powerlifting centric, centric uh, YouTube fitness. But in reality, if you train for aesthetics and bodybuilding, that's something that you don't have to even pay attention to. Find lifts that you like. It is not normal that you have lifts that you are feeling some sort of anguish towards doing. It makes no sense. You're the one who's deciding to do it. No one is forcing you. You're no one's slave. Therefore, if within the program, you better have things that you like. And I can tell you for a fact that it is 100% possible to have only lifts that you enjoy in your program. There is no such thing as a lift that is irreplaceable. They all are. And therefore, it's up to you to do it. Because once that is done, and you know for a fact that every single day is a good time, 
having discipline is going to be so easy because what's going to be tough, quote unquote, is getting there. But once you're in the gym, it's going to be a cakewalk. It's going to be very easy to go through it. And that, once it's put in place, is forever. So it's a step that is absolutely necessary. You need to put fun, the, the fun back in the training. The fun needs to be an integral part of the training. I don't believe in all of those mindset of, oh, struggling through adversity and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you're going to do plenty of that by sticking to it for 10 years. All right. But what you do during those 10 years needs to be enjoyable, right? Because at the end of the day, what's going to matter is the journey. The, the goal at the end is important, of course. That's what we, we strive towards. But once you get that goal, you'll want more and more and more. So what end, ends up really mattering is the path. It's the time you spend on that road getting to that goal. That needs to be a good time and a fun time. One, to build good memories. And two, so that you actually get back to it and do it again, again, and again. Number two is going to be scheduling for excitement. Because if you want and if you need an arsenal of live that you like doing, the timing at which you do them is also very important. It is possible to have a really good program that is going to end up just having you being fed up with it because of the way you scheduled it. And that can, and most of the time, will require you to be a little bit less greedy, to do a little bit less, to have smaller days, to have maybe a rest day here and there that are added to the program. And that might go against everything I say when I tell you that you need to work hard. But keep in mind one thing. Working hard, one, is for your own sake, and two, is correlated with progression. For me, as long as you're progressing, you're working hard. And therefore, there is no point in over-exhausting yourself physically and mentally if you're just going to get a tiny, tiny smidgen of extra progress. Because, keep in mind, the guy who trains like a madman for six months will make less gains than the guy who trains somewhat intensely for two years. Because one has understood that consistency is key and the other hasn't. And you cannot, you cannot approach bodybuilding like this. You have to approach bodybuilding as something that is sustainable. It's a marathon, it's not a sprint. And therefore, the program that you do day in and day out is the most optimal program for you, regardless of programming. That's how important it is. Meaning that a day cannot be optimal if you don't do it. And therefore, you always have to program with that in mind. Is it exciting? Does it make my heart race? Do I want to go in? Because if the answer is yes, I can tell you that this is a day you will never skip. And if it's a day you never skip, you'll get it in every single time. And that's how you accumulate tonnage and you get better. But it is a re it's a requirement and it's actually the most important requirement. Before you even think about all of the other variables of programming, think to yourself, is this realistic? Is it doable? Is it exciting? And if that day fits these three criteria, then you're good to go. You have successfully scheduled for excitement. And that, outside of just the weekly frequency, is also going to concern intra-workout frequency because you might have days that are just too long. You might have days that at some point you're supposed to train an hour and a half and an hour in you're done. And that's a big problem because I can tell you that those last 30 minutes, yeah, sure, they build character if you actually go and do them, but they're also not paying dividends, not as much as you think they are. And therefore, that's when you have to rethink things. Maybe you cut that day short. Maybe you take those 30 minutes, you put them on another day. That might be a very good way to keep the excitement and the fun going. Another way to think about it also is to realize that most of the time, unconsciously, we put things that we don't like at the end of the day for the program, thinking, okay, I start up with the most uh, exciting stuff, the stuff that I really live for, and then I just get rid of the, you know, the neck isolation, the calves, because I know you put your calves training at the end of the workout, like everyone else does. But the problem is that, what does it do to you? It makes it so that you end up skipping these body parts again, again, and again, because that's the end of the program. So you can just say, oh, I'm done for the day and leave. So how do you work around that? Well, you find a way to schedule for excitement. You try to put these exercises maybe even before the strength work so that you actually have to do them before you get to the fun stuff. And I can tell you that your performance will not be affected, but you'll actually get the tonnage in. These are ways you have to think about it because I do propose a very scientific approach to programming on this platform and on this channel. 
But on top of that, the most important aspect of it is the, uh, the love you're going to have for it. And if there's no love, there's, then there's no application of the principles. Therefore, you have to always keep that in mind. You have to keep the fun at the center of the training. And then the last, last thing, the last thing is uh, going to be sort of the cherry on top. Because the picture I just painted to you is one of a cake in reality. When you make a program, you're making a cake. And the goal is that you're going to have to eat that cake. And you're going to have to eat that cake in its entirety, and you're going to have to eat it repeatedly. So in reality, it's, a nev it's a, an, a, an always re reappearing cake. It's always going to make its resurgence, and you're going to have to eat it again. Which means that you better use ingredients that you like. Because you if you make a chocolate cake and you hate chocolate, you're not going to eat it. Okay? So you need to pick the best ingredients for you. Not for someone else. Not for someone who said, oh, these are the most optimal. No, no, no. The best for you. Because that is going to ensure the fact that you're going to eat that cake. Okay, It's going to be a pleasure to eat it because the taste is going to be good. Regardless of the qualities of the nutrition of the cake. Then you have to schedule when you eat that cake. Because even if it's the best cake in the world, if you eat all of it at once in one sitting, you're going to be sick. And therefore, you have to find pockets of time. You have to know exactly when to eat what portion. Maybe on certain days you can eat more. On certain days you can eat less. And then, when all of that is finished, you can add the last touch. And the last touch is the cherry on top. And that is going to be projects. A project is going to be a side gig that you do on top of your training that is adding that extra smidgen of fun to the thing, but also represents a variation from what you usually do, enough that it also is in a different range, in, in a sense. Meaning that it's something different. And that can be a lot of things. For me, it's finger push-ups. They don't do much for hypertrophy, but they're fun to do. And therefore, I get to do them. It's exciting. I see how much I can progress, etc. That's my little side project. But in reality, it represents not even 1% of my total work. So it's good. It's what you want. It's the reason why I speak about the cherry on top. I'm not talking about the apple on top. It cannot be too big. Because if it is, it's going to start waiting on the rest of the program. For example, if you tell me, hey... I want to be a really good bodybuilder and a really good boxer. Well, I'll tell you, okay, that's not really possible. You can't do both at once. You have to pick one, one endeavor. But if you told me, hey, I want to be a good bodybuilder and I want to be sort of decent at some, you know, bag work. Okay, now that's doable. You picked a project, a very small thing on the side that could also have some benefits for you because you're going to do some back work, you're going to work on your cardio and your work capacity. So that can be good. Even if it's not directly connected to bodybuilding, it can have a good impact. That can be, for example, swimming. If you like to do formal carries, it can be implemented. All of this is possible. You want to remain specific to achieve your goals, but you're not forced to stay always in the same lane. It's nice to see a little bit uh, of a different pan panorama once in a while, then get back to your main endeavor. That's the principle on the of the cherry on top. You eat the cake and at some point you want something more refreshing. You eat that cherry and then you'll get back to the cake. That is going to ensure that you have a sustainable lifting environment that keeps you going, keeps the training fun, and keeps the fire going. Because at the end of the day, that is the most important thing. Even though I like the warrior's mindset and I like the fact that we're getting after it, remain Always in the mind, the idea is that this is a privilege. This is a hobby. It's something you do for fun. And therefore, it has to remain fun. Because I can tell you that all of these guys, I say, oh, just struggle through it, bro. Well, these guys don't last. They don't make it for a long time. Because even though we are working for a goal, at the end of the day, what we do to get towards that goal and to work towards that goal is just as important. So you have to always keep that in mind. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.